Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Kenny Wallace Show, brought to you by JEGS, the leader in high-performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to JEGS.com, right there. Love that diecast. Well, all right, let's get right to it. Um, line grinder, line grinder, L-I-N-E grinder said to me on social media, he said, it's hard to believe that Denny Hamlin has 50 wins. Also hard to believe Martin Truex has more wins than Dale Jr. Kenny Wallace, do you think both of these drivers were better than Dale Earnhardt Jr.? When you rattle off the names automatically, I think no. But you line the stats up. Is Denny Hamlin... And Martin Truex, are they better than Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Then we scroll on down a little bit more here, and the conversation gets on going. Gets really good. Uh, And, you know, I responded and I said that the great Bill Elliott told me this, and I'll never forget it. He said, Herman? Racing's all about timing and circumstances. And he's right, and here's why. Because when you look at Denny Hamlin, he has never been with a different team. Denny Hamlin has won all these races with one team. You look at Martin Truex. Martin Truex, he really got going with that uh, Furniture Row team, won the championship. Then all of a sudden, Martin Truex gets hooked up with where he's at right now, which is Joe Gibbs racing, and and he's rolling. So Greg Hartman says, comparisons are weak, in my honest opinion. Sports change. Circumstances do change in teams. Well, you have to be funded. Got to have a lot of money. Remember Dale Jarrett? He didn't win all that much and went on to have a nice career at Gibbs. So before I give you my opinion, I want to tell you what line grinder came back and said, and this is where the conversation starts. I believe DEI, which is Dale Earnhardt Incorporated under Dale senior, the man in black, number three would have rivaled Hendrick motorsport to this day. They were on such a roll. Okay. I always call that the disclaimer. These are things we need to know so we can carry on the conversation. All right. What's my opinion on all this? Well, it has been brought up before, and this is not old news. We have talked about this before. You know, a couple years after we lost the great Dale Dale Earnhardt, Dale Sr., the man in black. Also, a little controversy. Is he Dale Sr.? You know, their real names were Ralph. Uh, I call him Dale Sr., the man in black, because Dale Sr. means senior. But Dale Sr. once said, I'm not a senior. Ralph, his dad was. So that's a whole nother story. But I'm still going to call him Dale Sr. Because to me, that differentiates. Wow, that was a big word. That makes sure you know that Dale Sr. means number three, man in black, and Dale Jr. is the number eight. So... The way I look at this is Dale Jr. was destined to be way better than what he ended up. Uh, There was timing and circumstances. Uh, Remember, Dale Earnhardt Jr. uh, is a dear friend of mine. We text each other all the time. We call each other all the time. Now, these are disclaimers. These These are not name dropping. So when you look at Dale Earnhardt Jr., he had a couple concussions, right? He, he Remember the big one out there at Fontana, California, coming off at of turn four? Then he admitted to the public, man, I wasn't right. And then the big one, the, the one that's hard for me to talk about because I don't really, you know, like to criticize people unless it's warranted, but this is just what happened. Dale Earnhardt Jr. could not get along with Teresa Earnhardt. Teresa was the widow of Dale Sr. So we lost Dale Sr. 
And when we lost Dale Sr., Teresa ended up running DEI. Now, if you remember, I don't know where the car's at. I had the Penzo car up there. But when I drove the Penzo car, remember Steve Park got hurt? I drove that Penzo car. Teresa Earnhardt was the sole owner. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. for 10 races was, I was a teammate to him. So remember, I drove underneath Teresa Earnhardt as the sole owner. And, and, and Dale Jr. was driving the Budweiser car. And I was Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s make-believe teammate for 10 to 12 races. So I'm privy and I kind of know, right? All right, now that we got all this gathered up, here we go. In my honest opinion, if Dale Earnhardt Jr. could have worked it out with Teresa, he would have went on to win a championship and won it all. That's my opinion. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we've listened on the dirty uh, mo, you know, radio, the download, the Dale Jr. download. It's no secret. Uh, I believe, my opinion, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s growth was stunted, slowed down because he could not get along with Teresa Earnhardt. That group right there, even though Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the Uries kind of split up a little bit, they could have got back together if DEI could have stayed going. If Dale Earnhardt Jr. stays at DEI, DEI never ends. It, it keeps digging, right? So then they don't get along. They don't get together. Uh, we, you know, we don't overcome the head injuries. We, we don't get Tony Uri Jr. and Sr. back. Now, remember, this was all documented just months ago where Dale Earnhardt Jr. interviewed Tony Uri Jr. And they, they aired it all out. But this shows about, Kenny, what is your opinion? Dale Earnhardt Jr. does not have the amount of wins. Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin have. I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. is an unbelievable driver, and here's why. Because I've been behind him. I've told Dale Jr. this before. He can drive a car looser than anybody I've ever seen, and I'm impressed with that because he never drove on dirt. Dale Jr., in my opinion, watched his father, just like Chase Elliott did. You know, sometimes you, you become a product of your environment. I believe Dale Earnhardt Jr., like Chase Elliott, as little children, watched their dad's race and ended up emulating them. And I think that's why Dale Earnhardt Jr. was so good right away. Uh, this kid could drive a car, you know, loose, neutral and stay going. He just barely turned the wheel, turn and, and go on. Uh, but when it all came to an end at DEI, Dale Jr. goes to Hendrick Motorsport. Sounded good, looked good, clean. Rick Hendrick, a good man. This is a good spot. It was the right decision because it was a good home. But the results were not as good. Uh, this is where the Bill Elliott phrase comes in to me. Herman, racing in life is all about timing and circumstances. We see this in professional athleticism to this day. Uh, you know, remember, for some of us old guys, we put Tony Dorsett and Herschel Walker as running backs with the Dallas Cowboys, the greatest running backs of all time. And what happened? They ran into each other. We didn't have a Franco Harrison, Rocky Blyer, like we had over there with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers had a good line. They blocked for Franco Harris. The Dallas Cowboys had the best running backs, but they didn't have a good line and it didn't work out. Now, I know, I know a lot of you are young, but that's what happened here with Rick Hendrick and Dale Jr. Had it all. Dale Jr. was just better 
right there with Tony, you're a junior, Tony, you're a senior. And, and junior said, you know, I'm sorry. He said that to Tony Uri Jr. So once again, would Dale Earnhardt Jr., would he have been better if he could have stayed at DEI? Now, the reason this is a show, the reason this is the Kenny Wallace show is because that could have happened. Okay, when we lost Dale Sr., that, that's a whole nother deal. Remember, we lost Dale Sr., but DEI kept on going with Dale Jr., right? Then it all came to an end when Dale Jr. left and DEI ended up, you know, folding. Uh, it, it's sad because we all wanted to see it. And Dale Jr. said it was fair. This was a, Dale Jr. told me because I said this on NASCAR race day built by the Home Depot. I said, it's just sad because, you know, we, we really wanted to see Dale Jr. stay at DEI. That would have been a little easier to accept. But when DEI came to an end, it's like, oh, you know, because it was a glorious time in NASCAR history. And, and let me remind you, this is a very big stat, what I'm going to tell you. This stat is not to be overlooked. I was told by NASCAR executives, the highest of high, the highest time in NASCAR history, the most fans in the stands, the highest TV ratings, was not, not when we lost Dale Sr. It was not when Dale Sr. was living, which is shocking. It was when Dale Jr. wore the hat backwards, brought the MTV crowd, brought the young kids. It was 2006. So when Dale Jr. came into NASCAR, it, it rocket ship because it brought in a whole new age group and he was winning. So we are at 13 minutes and I think that's long enough. And I, I'm going to end you with this. Yes. Dale Earnhardt Jr., could have went on to win more than Denny Hamlin, could have went on to win more than Martin Truex, could have went on to win championships. And I do want to say this. Pretend we're at a bar right now drinking beer because that's what we're doing. I know this does not matter. It's just a beer drinking conversation. But I'm here to tell you, in my opinion, there's no doubt in my mind that Dale Earnhardt Jr., if he could have stayed at DEI for all the reasons I told you, not going to repeat myself, he could have been a multi-time champion. He could have won well over 50 races, but it didn't happen. And this is where it ends. Bill Elliott was right. Life and racing and everything is all about timing and circumstances. All right, that's the Kenny Wallace Show. Talk it over. Give me your opinion. Respond right here. What is your opinion? Remember, we're on Spotify, iTunes. We have a podcast. You can listen to this on the way to work. This one here, you're probably listening all the way to work because it's only 14 minutes long. But if you want to go to work, come back, you can listen to it on the way to work and all the way back. We're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. We're podcast one. Until the next show, Kenny Conversation, the Kenny Wallace Show just keeps on rolling.